By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Staples Tournament. We have reached the top eight. And maybe you're wondering, what is Staples Magic again? Well, let me tell you. Staples Magic is very simple. It's a um, old school magic format designed by the Hanseatic Old School Crew. And what they've said is we're just gonna ban, we're just gonna ban all the staples out of old school magic. And what you've got left are the cool cards and you're gonna play with those cool cards. Now, of course, there's a lot of discussion. What cards should you add on the list? What cards should you take out? Sometimes if you take a card away, another card becomes really powerful. So this list is changing, it's moving. Um, you know, I think there are healthy discussions about the list, but I love the intention of this format that you're gonna play with all those goofy, cards out there and you're just gonna see how is this going to work out. So today we've reached the top eight. We had more than 50 players join uh, join us for this tournament here on Timmy Talks. It's pretty cool. And now we've reached the top eight decks so of the quarterfinals. In the quarterfinals, we see David who's playing with his deck, Big Brain Energy. It's green, red, and black. And it's a uh, Eureka plays a pretty big part in that deck. And he is taking on the deck by Rob, which is called Red Ruby. And it's not completely mono red, it's mainly red but there's also a little bit of green and a little bit of black. Again, a very, very cool deck. So I can't wait to kind of t uh, discuss the deck text with you. I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks, but before I jump into the deck text, first a message from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are back and ready to dive into those deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of David and his deck Big Brain Energy. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of David Big Brain Energy and I mean look at that deck. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? I mean four forces of nature, four colossus of Sardia, Two of those big dragons, what is that, the Masmadi? I, f I forgot the name, but it's 8-8 Flying Dragon. I mean, this is really cool. And of course, this entire deck revolves around that playset there in the middle, Eureka, right? Eureka, two green and two to cast for a sorcery that reads, starting with you, each player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. Repeat this process until no one puts a card onto the battlefield. So repeat this process until no one decides to put a card on the battlefield. That means you put something down and if your opponent says no thank you, you can continue going on until you no longer want to put anything onto the battlefield. And that's just fantastic. And in this deck we also see four install energies and I think they're quite good. It's just one green uh, for this enchant creature and what it does, it, it allows you to untap your creature one more time but it also gives your creature haste. So you can attack with your creature the moment uh, you, you play this. So if you have a Colossus of Sardia that you can play out with your Eureka, you can then put the Instal Energy on it and you can attack this very same turn. So I think Instal Energy is really important in this deck. And then we see another play set of cards I find really, really cool, that's Exida. And Exida is basically a cheap book, right? The Gem de Tome is four to cast, four and tap to draw a card. An artifact we all know. Exida is only three to cast and three and tap and you draw a card. The problem, of course, is you do need the right mana, green, red, and black, right? Those are the mana you need. We also see Lay Druids in here. I have to say, I'm really liking this deck. And this is also one of the reasons why I'm really a fan of this stapleless format, or I actually should say these type of formats, because I mean, look at this deck. Isn't it a beauty? Look at these cards. And this is a deck that made it into the top 16. So in a field of almost 50 players, this is one of the top uh, top decks, you know? So I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive by itself, isn't it? Anyway, this is uh, the deck of David. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Rob Red Ruby. And oh my, there's so much happening in this, in this deck. I don't know where to start, but I'm gonna give it a try. Um, as you can see, it's dominantly red. 
There's a little bit of green and a little bit of black. There are actually no black cards in there, but you need black mana to cast those legendary creatures. Maybe it's nice to start with those legendary creatures. We see Aedun Oakenshield, a 1-2 creature for one green, one black, one red. You can pay a green, a black, and a red, tap it, take target creature from your graveyard, put it into your hand. Now, this card works together really well with the playset of Bull Lightnings. So Bull Lightning is three red for a 6-1 creature with haste. You can attack with it, the turn it comes into play. It also has trample. So if you time this right, it's like a double lightning bolt. You can deal six to your opponent. Uh, but at the end of the turn, it destroys itself. So it's only there just as a lightning bolt, a super big lightning bolt. Um, the cool thing is it destroys itself. It goes into the graveyard and then you've got Aedun Oakenshield. You can get it back. Another really cool thing is that he's also playing with Safe Haven. So Safe Haven is a land from the dark two and tap, put target creature into the save haven, so exile it from the game. When you sec save haven during your upkeep, that creature comes back into play. So again, you can use save haven in combination with your bull lightning. So again, there's a lot happening in this deck because this is not just the only things that are happening. But anyway, let's just check out the other golden creatures in this deck. So we've got Xira, three of those. It's a one, two flying creature for one green, one red, one black. So you also need those mana. Um, and then, as I said, it's flying, but it also has an ability. You can pay a green, a red, and a black and tap it, and you can draw a card. So it's like a cheap GM day tome. However, you do need those three specific colors of mana. And also it's a creature, so it's very vulnerable. But if you can get this creature to stick, it's super cool. But it, because it can give you cheap cards to draw and it can be it can be a game decider, to be honest. I mean, that card advantage is a really big thing. And um, then when we're looking at the rest of the deck, we see some other really cool creatures. What do you think about Edwin Afrit, a full playset of those? It's a 3-6 Arabian Nights creature that cannot block. If it wants to block, you have to flip a coin. If you win the flip, it blocks. If it doesn't, it taps itself and doesn't block. So that's pretty bad, but you can attack with it. And it's a 3-6 for three mana. So just for three red mana, you've got three offense, six defense. That's insane stats for just three, especially in old school. Um, and then you also have the beautiful Dragon Whelps here, two, three flyer that you can pump plus uh, one plus zero, and you can make it five max. You could make it more, but then it destroys itself at the end of the turn. And then next to the Dragon Whelp, we've got three really good cards and three cards that I think could be super good in this matchup. We've got three Disharmonies. Disharmony, one red and two for an instant from a Legends. So you can play this when your opponent is attacking and then you can gain control of target attacking creature. It untaps and you can use it on your side of the board. So you can use it as a blocker. So let's say your opponent is attacking with um, a 9-9 nine, nine Colossus of Sardia and an 8-8 eight, eight Force of Nature. Let's make this a really cool combat step. You can play your um, Disharmony Take, uh, take control of the Colossus of Sardia, kill the Force of Nature by blocking it, and then you've got a 9-9 that you can actually sack to Diamond Valley to gain 9 life. So can you imagine pulling off that play? That means it's like um, a 3 for 1, right? Like you have a 2 for 1, but you're also gaining the 9 life. It's insane value. It's it's sick, and, and that can be done with this deck, and that's what I think is, is just really, really cool. What we also see in this deck are a few other tricks. For example, Taunus' Coffin together with Inferno. Inferno is an instant from the dark that deals six damage to all players and all creatures. So it's basically like it wipes the board usually, right? Unless you've got insanely big creatures that maybe we're gonna see in this matchup. But we've got Inferno, deals six to everything. And then, of course, before you cast Inferno or, or, or in response to your own cast of Inferno, you can put your favorite creature into the coffin so it's protected from the damage. And then the next turn, you can untap the Taunus' coffin and the creature comes back out. What you could also do is just play a Shatterstorm. And then you destroy your own coffin. Yes, but you also destroy the artifacts of your opponent. And what happens with the creature that's in the coffin when the coffin gets destroyed? Well, the cool thing is the creature comes back. It does come back into play tap though, so Taunus' Coffin doesn't work with Bull Lightning, unfortunately. Um, now, there are two other cards I'd like to highlight, and then I think we've discussed, you know, the, the biggest part of this deck, uh, and those are the two Tranquilities. Maybe you're wondering, why would you splash green just for those two Tranquilities? You have to remember, we're playing Stapeless. A lot of cards are banned in this format. One of those cards uh, is Disenchant. That means that Enchantment Removal is is difficult you know and i kind of like that because it means you've got space to play enchant creatures and to play goofy enchantments um but that also makes a card like tranquility better tranquility is sorcery one green and two destroys all enchantments so tranquility is quite nice okay we've looked at the deck of rob we've looked at the deck of his opponent that only means one thing we are ready let's go to the match
Game number one of the Staples quarterfinals. Here we go. Rob on the play, the player on the right. He's playing a, a deck called Red Ruby, Red, Green, and Black. Mainly red, though, for Bull Lightnings, for example. He's taking on David. David's playing a Eureka deck. Green, Black, and Red. So a lot of big creatures in his deck, starting with the Forest, passing back to Rob, playing a Taiga. And just a pass turn. So kind of a take it easy start here from both players, as to be expected when you look at their lists. Tapping the forest. What are we going to see here from David? Hey, there's a wild growth. Ramping up. And there's a city of brass. Passing the turn. So that means he can make four mana next turn. That's enough for Eureka. Let's first see what Rob can do. Tapping three. Oh, there's an Edwin Afrit, the 3-6 creature from Arabian Nights. And uh, when it blocks, you have to flip a coin. If you lose the flip, it doesn't block and it taps itself. But I think Rob is mainly going to use it as an uh, attacker, so that doesn't really matter that much. And perhaps uh, David is now checking out what the creature actually does. In all honesty, I find this creature too good to see so little play. I'm, uh, I think it's really a sleeping giant. It could see more play. There's the pass turn here by Rob. So David taking on his turn number three. If he can find a land and if he has a Eureka, we could be in for a treat. Ooh, he doesn't. Plays a, uh, a Druid, a Lay Druid, I believe. A 1-1 one, one creature, you can tap it to untap target land. And there's also a Diamond Valley. So both of these players playing with the Diamond Valleys, by the way. So we could be in for long games with lots of life gain. There's another Taiga. There's the attack for 3. And David dropping here to 16. There's another Itwin of Freed. So, I mean, these it wins alone, it's just a lot of pressure. And how are you going to get rid of a creature with six toughness? I mean, it's really tough, especially in a format where cards like Swords to Plowshares uh, or, or Band. It's as simple as that. So, let's see what David can do. There is a forest here. So, now he's got four mana. Going to tap, untap, tap again. It's going to take two damage. Oh, look at this. There's an Ashes to Ashes. So he's going to go to 14, then take five. So he ends up a nine. But he's going to destroy both Edwins here. What a move by David. Also using that Lay Druid to untap the City of Brass, being able to create double black. This is so good for David. Yes, he takes a lot of, da of damage. But if he wouldn't have taken care of these two, he probably would have taken... Uh, Six anyway, and look at that. Rob now playing Diamond Valley, changing his mind, actually going for a Batlands instead. Tapping three, it seems. What are we going to see? Oh, there's Exida Adian. So this is the one two flyer. And if you pay a green, a black, and a red and tapper, you get to draw a card. So let's see if this uh, creature survives. Just a one two flyer. But wow, what a play here by David that Ashes to Ashes really kind of hit the spot for him. He's going to tap two, three. Take another damage, drop to eight. Ooh, he's going to go so low. What are we going to see? His own Exida here. So both players having Exida on the board, going to start drawing some cards. But uh, David is getting dangerously low. Remember, Rob is playing with four Bull Lightnings. He's going to draw a card for turn. There is a Diamond Valley that we saw earlier that he took back. So Diamond Valley now on the board. What is he going to do? Just pass an end step draw a card or does he want to draw a card now or does he have better options in hand? This is game number one. Really curious to see what Rob is going to do here. So really, really in the tank. I wonder what cards he's got in hand. Tapping out, tapping five. There's a Fisher playing the Fisher on the Xida. He can eat up the Xida, gain two life. Oh, it looks like he's forgetting to do it, though. Could have gone up to 10. Uh, it looks like he... Oh, no, he's taking damage. It's... Did he miss some damage earlier, perhaps? Anyway, he's on eight. So he could have eaten up the Xida, gone, could have gone back up to, uh, to 10, I believe. Passing the turn. 
And now we see Rob drawing a card for turn. There's a mountain. Tapping three. Oh, there's a ball lightning. That means he's going to go to two. Or does David have a response here? I mean, this ball lightning. Oh, man, it's, it's almost KO. Do remember, it's just the first game, though. Yeah, he's going to drop to two. It's hard to see, but he's on two at the moment. So last, maybe, no, not last turn. He's got the Xeta as only a 1-2 flyer, so he could put David on 1. What is David going to do? Just a pass, though. Another card here for Rope. In the background, by the way, you hear the church bells. They're kind of going, uh, going loco at the moment. No idea what's going on. Maybe there's a wedding going on. But anyway, it doesn't affect the game. So Rob here looking at his hand. What to do next? Hey, the church bells have stopped. Finally. Okay, there's a city of brass. Rope, by the way, is still on 20. Or is, oh, 19. Maybe he, why is he on 19? Not quite sure, but he's on 19. There's a dragon whelp. Oh, man. This is so tough for David. He really needs the best possible draws to get out of this. Remember, it is the first game, though. There is a Taiga passing the turn. And yeah, exactly. Rob just was on 19. Okay, he's drawing an extra card with the Xira. Sometimes these players like verbally say, I'm going to draw an extra card, which is kind of hard when you look back at these matches. There's the attack. Anyway, this is the game here for Rob David losing the first game. But it's just the first game, though. So both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So look at that. Rob actually starting here, which surprises me because David lost. So he chose not to be on the play. So uh, one game up for Rob, starting with a mountain, passing a turn to David. So David going for the extra card. I guess in a way it makes sense when you play Eureka, because you have then more cards to cast. But it does mean Rob will get uh, to those three red earlier, and that's pretty dangerous, because that means he can start casting Edwins, Bull Lightning, stuff like that. His deck really gets going at three. So I'm not expecting anything, anything from him yet here with the two red. There's the pass exactly. So let's see what David can do. Play the Batlands in his first turn. Pretty sure he's looking for like a Wild Grove Forest. Wild Grove will be quite nice for him. Another Batlands, no green mana. That is not great. He needs the green. There's the Taiga tapping three. What are we going to see for three? There's the Edwin Afrit again, the three six. There is a green source, at least a bayou. And playing out the Xida Adian here, the one two flyer. So that can help. Can help him to draw some cards, find the things he needs. There's another red. There's the attack for three, expecting David to just take the hit here. Exactly. Gonna drop to 17. Ooh, there's a Dragon Whelp, two three flyer. And for one red, you can give it plus one, plus oh. You can make it up to a 5-3. If you put more red into it, it's destroyed at the end of the turn. There is a forest. So now he has enough to cast a Eureka. There's a wild growth. I mean, if he doesn't have it, then at least he can start using his Eureka, which is quite nice. The problem for him, though, is that Rob's got a lot of firepower there on the board. He can now hit for eight, actually. Going to play a bad lance. Exactly going to attack, putting both creatures here sideways. One of the things David could do is put his Xira in front of the Whelp. 
and then uh, draw a card with it. Looks like Rob is changing his mind though. Taking the attack back, looking at the cards in hand again. I wonder what he's, uh, what his options are. Only attacking with the Idwin. This surprises me. So just three points of damage for David. I think if you're David, you're quite happy with this. It's going to drop to 14, draw a card here. In response, there's the Fisher. So I guess that's the reason why, well, I mean, he still could have attacked with the Whelp. Anyway, there is that card for David, of course, that still happens. I do understand this Fisher here by Rob. You really want to get that uh, card drawing under control. David here finding a swamp. Okay, what are we going to see? This is going to be an explosive turn. There's another Wild Grove. Look at that. So many mana he can produce by tapping that single Bayou. Ooh, and there's a Pyrotechnics. So, I mean, he can kill the Whelp, deal one to Rob. Put him on, uh, on 19. I think he didn't take any damage yet. Passing the turn back here to Rob. And this is the thing, right? Usually with Pyro... Uh, with the Pyro card, you can take out two creatures if you're lucky, but in this case, you can't because Edwin and Freed has got a six toughness. Taking another hit from the Edwin. Dropping to 11, I believe. There's Exida Adian of, uh, of Rob. Yeah, again, it's looking good for Rob here. So Rob being able just to put constant pressure on the life total of David. David really struggling. I mean, David's deck works if you have the Eureka, but if you don't have the Eureka, the deck just cannot really do anything. I mean, he does have a lot of mana, so, I mean, if he has a Force of Nature, he can actually play it out. But I guess he doesn't have it, or else he would have done it already. An 8-8 Trampler would help a lot in this situation. So really is curious to see David playing Diamond Valley here. That alone is not going to help him much. Okay, he's going to tap a lot. What are we going to see? Oh, there's a force of nature. I was kind of hoping for that. 8-8 eight, eight, Trampler. Wow. This baby has been around since Alpha. This is a beauty. And this is bad news for Rob. He really needs another Earth. Uh, I won't say another Earthquake, but I mean another Fisher. Here to take care of the... Uh, of the force, gonna tap four. What are you gonna see for four? Oh, there's a coffin. Coffin can do the trick. He can put it in the coffin. He's got three mana left to do so. Put it in the coffin and attack him. Oh, this is bad news. In response, of course, David could consider eating it up. The question is, should he do that? He is gonna do that. He's gonna eat it up. He's gonna go back up to 19. Then he's gonna take four. So he's gonna end up on 15, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. He's back to 15. And I mean, this is also good news for Rob because it means you can use your coffin again next turn. But I also understand this decision by David. But it's going to be tough to deal here with the coffin as well. There's an Urborg. Really curious to see what David's going to do. Got a little bit of time with that life gain. Gonna tap three, four, and there's another Xida. Tap a black, a black, I believe he's got one green floating still. Oh, he's gonna play a drain life. Probably on Rob's Xida. Yep, going to take care of that. That means two more life for David. He's going to go back up to 17. I mean, he's got to add the life, though. Is he forgetting to add the life here? I mean, he did that in game one also when he forgot to add some life. Going to take a hit of three. 
it's hard to see on the dice if he's counting the life or not. If he's not, he's now on 12. Then, of course, we see Rob here putting the Xida in the uh, Tannis' coffin. Yeah, I believe he's on 12, so he forgot to add those two life from the drain life. Should be on 14 here. We'll see. Maybe they'll correct themselves later in the game. It's really up to the players here to spot these things. I draw a card for turn. Ooh, there is a Eureka. The thing is with this Eureka, though, because I've played a Eureka deck in this event myself as well. I know the feeling that you draw the Eureka when you already have enough land and, like, your hand's pretty much empty. And that's really the last card that you then want from the top of your deck. It can be quite frustrating. That's, of course, why Eureka is an interesting card to play with. It's all about the balance. There's another Xida hitting the board. There's the attack for three. So David gonna drop to nine. That means he's got three more turns to go. I think I see an instal energy there. So he's got instal energy, which is useless. He's got Eureka, which is useless. Assuming he doesn't have any big creatures. But again, if he does have big creatures, he's got enough mana. He can cast them. He doesn't need a Eureka anymore at this point. I guess if he has a Colossus of Sardia, he could use a Eureka to cast it. Because I think he's got 8 mana, if I'm not mistaken. Because the Diamond Valley, of course, doesn't tap for mana. So he can produce 8 mana. So he doesn't have enough for the Colossus. So that could be a reason to cast a Eureka. Then slam that instant energy on it and attack with it. That would be pretty cool. In the tank here. Not happy, of course, with the situation. Trying to find a way out. Remember, David is already a game down here in the quarterfinals. Ooh, is he going to play the Eureka? Oh, he's going to play the Eureka. I'm always happy to see a Eureka. I hope that he's got a Colossus. Show me a Colossus. Oh, it's even better. It's one of the Elder Dragons. Oh, that is so cool. 7-7 seven, seven Flyer. Oh, that's so sweet. And I'm trying to think, which one is this again? Is this Vivictus Asmadi? Anyway, putting an instal energy on it as well. This is so cool. That means he can attack with a 7-7. Seven, seven. I love it. Even if you lose, you manage to cast an Elder Dragon, man. Yeah, attack with it. Don't forget to attack. Exactly. Give me a moment. Attack with it. Go for it. Exactly. Turn it sideways. Deal seven. Yeah, there you go. So Rob is dropping to 12. I believe he can also untap it with the install energy because you can untap it an extra time. Because then he can also use it as a blocker, which, which, which is important. He's also going to pump it. So he's going to deal 8 points of damage instead of 7, I believe. That would mean Rob is going to drop to 11. And now he's going to untap it. And I think we see Rob here looking up the card, maybe both cards, trying to figure out what, what it does. And I mean, this is a quarterfinals. Both players, of course, hoping to make it into the semi, so really taking their time. It looks like a lot of damage for Rob. I thought he was still on 19 and he would take 8. So I'm a bit confused here as well. Oh, but of course you can pay a red, give it plus 1, plus 0. Oh, and you can, yeah, so he's just pumped. There's like a fire breathing effect. A red, a green, and a black. You can pump it plus 1, plus 0. Oh, so he's just making it really big. Wow, putting Rob on 8. This game is getting closer than I thought. And we see Rob here untapping the coffin, which makes sense because that means he can put... Exactly, he's now going to put the Elder Dragon into the coffin. The question is, is David now going to sack it? I mean, I would... Uh, it's difficult, right? I would be tempted to sack it because you kind of need the life. And then next turn, you can at least draw an extra card of Xida, kind of hoping for the best. 
Then again, if you keep sacking creatures, you're also going to keep giving Rob a space in the coffin. And I think one of the really good things about the coffin is that those creatures come back into play tapped. I mean, that's, that's really good. Or else David could have used the Xira to instantly draw a card, to block something. I guess he couldn't draw a card because he doesn't have the mana, but you know, the, the fact that it comes back into play tapped really does matter. So David now really in a tough spot. Is he going to sack the Elder Dragon to the Diamond Valley? Yes or no? I mean, it's difficult. Yeah, he is going to do it. So he's going to go back up 7 life. He's going to go to 16 then, I believe. I believe it was on 9. It's going to take another hit, though. So I think he would end up on 13, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. So he's on 13. Two cards in hand for Rob. I mean, still looking great for Rob. That coffin is doing so much work for him. There's a draw. What card was that? I mean, he can still use Exceed to, to get to look at another card. Ooh, he's gonna tap stuff. What is that one card in hand? Yeah, he's gonna draw a card, so that means he's got one green floating. I think I saw a force of nature in there, but he, can he play that out? I don't think he can. Doesn't have enough green mana to do so. Ooh, there's another drain life, so it's gonna drain Ixida. Of course, he responds, Rob's gonna draw a card. So more life gain now. It's gonna go uh, back up here. It's on 15, I believe. Passing the turn to Rob, untapping everything. And I mean, look at those it win of right? They're just here to stay. It's so hard to get rid of those creatures. They're doing so much work for Rob in this matchup. There's the attack for three. And of course, Rob, you're putting the Xira into the coffin again. There's a tap. Oh, another coffin. This is so deadly. And I'm not sure if David has any answers to artifacts actually in his deck. These coffins are really ruining David here. There's a Taiga, and I think he has a Force of Nature in hand. Of course, you should play it out, but then uh, Rob's going to put it in the coffin. And then the question is, are you going to sack it again, or are you going to let him put it in the coffin? The thing is, you can sack it, gain 8. That's going to buy you some time, but time for what? It's so tough here to play against these uh, Tonus' coffins. They're so good in this matchup. So Rob's going to take his turn. Going to keep one coffin tapped. Has the other one, of course, untapped still. So all he has to do now is use the coffin, put the force in there, attack with the Itwin. Yeah, exactly. Going to use the coffin. Put it in there. There's the attack. David dropping to nine. And I get David here for not sacking it because, I mean, you just keep sacking stuff. Killing your own creatures, that's not what you want to do. There's another, okay, now we're talking, there's another force. And now this is interesting because Rob will have to choose, what am I going to do? He's going to let the Xira out of the coffin. Coming into play tapped, of course, he can put the other force in, attack for three, put David on six. There's a Hammerheim. So Hammerheim taps for red, can also take away a landwalk ability. Quite nice if you combine it with uh, in a deck with Urnum Jin. Tapping three, probably going to exactly putting the force in. There are two forces of nature in the coffin. There's the attack for three. David taking damage. Oh, he's so low now. He's on six. It's hard to see, but I believe he's on six. Oh, two more swings and he's dead. But remember, he does have the Xira to draw some extra cards. Two cards in hand for Rob. I mean, if you're Rob, you really don't want to pass the turn. You want to finish it here, but he can't. Passing the turn, 
that means David gets at least two, maybe even four more cards. But at least he gets to look at two more cards, draw on the first one. Going to use the Xena again, draw the second one. What is he going to find? Is it useful? There's a Taiga, not useful. One card left in hand. Passing the turn, oh no. There's a safe haven, also not useful for Rob. Swinging in here, putting David on three. Oh man, what a thriller here, game number two. David has to win this one or else he's knocked out and Rob will continue to the semifinals. Oh, there's an Inferno finishing the game. Inferno dealing six damage to all creatures and all players. Unless David has something in there, but nope, it's a forest. This is it, end of the road here. Wow, 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 wow. David winning it here and, uh, sorry, Rob winning it here, of course, against David. And I think those Tonsis Coffins were just too good in this specific matchup. They were just the uh, MVPs and also the Idwin of Freak. What a strong creature is that, amazing. Now, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And next week, I will be back with more action from the Staples Tournament. Then we're gonna dive into the semi-finals. So if you don't wanna miss a thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And um, yeah, stay tuned on whatever happens here on the channel. And if you wanna help me out, please hit that like button, share this on your socials and leave a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show, just like David and uh, Rob are. And you can do that by checking out patreon.com slash timmytalks. And then uh, you can find out there how you can become a pa patron. It already starts for just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. And that means you can also join in on all the tournaments that I organize, including this Staples tournament. So if you like what you see, please consider becoming a patron of the show. And talking about patrons of the show, let's go to the end scroll and take a look at our fantastic, wonderful, amazing patrons and channel members. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?